Mountain Lion updated, Amazon's event, Facebook 5.0, and AT&T launches their shared data plans. It's Friday, August 24th, 2012, and this is iWeek. I'm Tim Chatton, and this is what's going on in the Apple world today. Good morning, and welcome to another edition of iWeek. First up today is the rather exciting news that Apple has released macOS 10.8.1. If you have the installer app as well, you'll get the update. So if you have Lion or Snow Leopard still installed and you have that update app for Mountain Lion there, it'll update that app for you. So that's a pretty cool thing I noticed on one of my Lion machines. So what's in 10.8.1? Well, according to Apple, this is an update that includes general operating system fixes that improve the compatibility and stability of your Mac including fixes that uh, there's a few here, about six or seven that they list off what it actually does. Things like improving Migration Assistant, uh, Microsoft Exchange and Mail, audio through Thunderbolt displays, iMessages being sent, uh, and a variety of other things. It's overall a really nice update that many have noted will improve your battery life if you are a laptop user. Best of all, updating this update, updating this update is really painless. It's 24.2 megabytes in size. This is one of the smallest uh, file size updates I've ever seen for the Mac. Load up the Mac App Store and within minutes you're ready to be updated uh, or in minutes you'll actually be updated. It's really really awesome that, that they've managed to do all this in uh, quite a uh, Delta update so to speak. So update to the latest version of the Mountain Line, it's, uh, it's a nice update and uh, went very smoothly for me. Another news is Amazon inviting the press to a special event just days before Apple's iPhone event. According to All Things D, Amazon has sent invitations to the media for a September 6th press conference in Santa Monica, California. The invitation offers absolutely zero hints. The full text states, please join us for an Amazon press conference. Amazon's event will take place at the Barker Hangar in Santa Monica. The venue appears to be an old building at the Santa Monica Airport, just outside of Los Angeles. This place commonly hosts private events and film shoots. All Things D states, it's big, just like the announcement will be. It is expected that new Kindles will be announced, but who knows, perhaps the Kindle phone will finally be released. Anyways, this Amazon event is coming up soon, and I'm curious to see what will be announced. Now let's move on to some app news. So first up today is uh, Facebook. Facebook has updated their app and it's a complete rewrite. According to Mac rumors, Facebook's engineers have dumped the HTML5 based app and rebuilt it using Objective-C programming to make it perform more like a native iOS app. In an interview with All Things D, Mike Johnson, Facebook iOS mobile product manager said, People have different expectations when it comes to using Facebook for iOS. They expect a level of performance and speed that just wasn't there in the old app. The largest pain points include scrolling through the feed, photos, and loading the app. All will be much fa uh, faster, faster by a factor of three. Also, Facebook mobile developers working on the three separate iOS apps, Facebook, Camera, and Messenger, all now include a shared code base with each other. So Messenger and Camera are actually running inside of the proper Facebook app, bringing many of those familiar features to Facebook for iOS. As a bonus of all this, he states that a shared code base means faster development cycles, so we'll probably see improvements sooner to all of these apps. So this is all around great news, Twitter still kills Facebook on mobile, and I'll be curious to see just how good they can make the Facebook work on an iPhone. Now, let's move on to some virtual software news. Virtual software, as many of you know, lets you run Windows and Linux on your Mac without rebooting. It seems that VMware and Parallels are constantly trying to one-up each other. So, uh, basically, we're getting brand new updates to both of these apps, and the first one to be released is VMware Fusion 5. It's now available. Uh, Parallels 8 will be being coming out on September 4th, so that one is quickly uh, behind it here. So what's new in VMware Fusion 5? Uh, first off, it's designed for Mountain Line, 
Run Windows on Mountain Lion and search Windows programs in Launchpad. Use AirPlay mirroring the stream Mac and Windows apps on your HDTV and get VMware Fusion notifications in Mountain Lion's Notification Center. Really cool stuff there. Windows 8 optimizations is also included. VMware Fusion 5 supports Windows 8 Standard, Pro, and Enterprise Editions, so consumers can optimize the new Windows 8 Metro environment directly on a Mac. It's enhanced for the Mac. Support for the latest Mac technologies include compatibility with Mountain Line, Retina Display Optimization, USB, connecti USB 3 connectivity, and improved support for large memory Macs. Also included, next generation performance, performance enhancements up to 40% faster, uh, and better battery life management, and faster 3D graphics. And there's a few other things included as well. Uh, Linux 3D desktops, better graphics support for that, better transitions between multiple operating systems, and the list goes on and on. Overall, it sounds like an awesome update. I especially love the mountain line features. That would, that's what has me most excited here. I am currently not a customer of either of these apps as I'm happy to live just on my Mac. Fusion 5 is priced at $50 for the standard version with an enhanced professional version available at $100. Users who purchased Fusion 4 on or after July 25th can receive a free update to the new version. Parallels has yet to announce what their update will include, but rest assured I'll let you know when I know. Next up in app news is rather sad news that my VLC replacement app is leaving the Mac App Store. The app I talk about is mPlayer X. Here's what the developer has to say about it. After arguing with Apple for three months, I decide to stop updating mPlayer X in Mac App Store. Sounds like this developer is not the best at English, but I'll, I'll walk you through it here. As some of you know, from 1st June, Every application in Mac App Store have to adopt sandboxing for releasing a new version. Sandboxing, although said to be good protection from the malware, brings too many troubles to the applications themselves. I have made six builds trying to get mPlayer X to pass Apple's review and have explained why some privileges are so important for mPlayer X to achieve this in that feature. But the answer is no, 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 and no. And Player X will lose so many features that if it adopting sandboxing, it could lose. Uh, it could not load the subtitle automatically. It could not play the next episode for you automatically. It could not save the snapshots to the place where you want it, etc. Without those features, and Player X were just another lame QuickTime X, which I could not accept. Mac App Store is a great channel to let more guys get to know and Player X. But there's so many useful features waiting to be implemented. I don't think I should waste more time on this. I think you should, as this is rather sad news. I personally don't need the features the developer was talking about. The feature I love about Emplar X is the ability to play nearly every video format, something that QuickTime 10 cannot do. So no, Emplar X or Emplar 10, you would not become a crappy QuickTime app if you lost those features, as you would be just as awesome as VLC is. Anyways, sad news, I, I do love the Mac App Store, and this was one of the good ones. The app will remain in the App Store as a free app, just no more updates to it. Next up is Google Chrome news. The iOS version now has the ability to share to Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. The update also included a few bugs and fixes. That's it. Next up, I just want to mention that the drafts for iOS app got some nice updates and a brand new app for the iPad. As I said, there's now a version for the iPad, and the iPhone version includes refinements to the user interface, easy to add links, some new font choices, compatibility to view notes in full screen, and the compatibility to, or capability to append notes to an existing drafts note in Dropbox. Drafts is a very handy app for those that need an app just for noting, uh, jotting notes down quickly. So that's it with app news today. We've got two stories to close out the show. First up is Hulu. They've redesigned their website. The design emphasizes new content on the site and makes browsing even easier. Just in time for the fall release of TV shows that begins next month. And finally, those overpriced and shady share data plans are now available from AT&T. I'd recommend staying away from these as they will most likely cost you more money. So that's that. Before closing out the show today, I want to remind everyone that iWick Again is airing again this weekend. iWick Again is for those that really appreciate what I do and think that I should, you know, get some 
funding for iWake. And so uh, the, the Daily Show will continue on as it won't without your support. The $10 a month subscription gives you a 30 minute or more or less audio show every Saturday uh, or Sunday, depending on the week. Uh, so around 30 minutes every week, as well as a way to wake up to, uh, basically provide you a way to wake up to iWake again and provide you a way to pay for the Monday through Friday show that most of you get for free. Another benefit is you actually get the scripts that I write out for each and every show. You have access to all of those, and you, you even have access to the scripts I'm in the process of writing. So you can kind of see my, my uh, creative process, so to speak. If you would like to join the I Wake Again community, head on over to iwakepodcast.com slash again. Once again, that's iwakepodcast.com slash again. Well, that's what's going on in the Apple world today. As I just said, that will do this week for some of us, but not everyone. Uh, I will be talking to iWake Again subscribers uh, this weekend. I'll talk to everyone else on Monday. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to everyone again real soon.